Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching Serialnet video series on hashing and this video is the second part of the series. So it is mandatory for you to watch the first part. You will see that link somewhere here. It must be coming or if it is not coming, you just go and check the description. So that is the prerequisite because I have explained like what is the basic need of the hashing? Like why do you need that and how it addresses a very bigger problem and solves it like so beautifully. So if you want to see why you should use hashing and why it is a magical data structure, please go and watch that video. So in this video, we'll talk about the collision resolution technique. So if you have already watched that video, then only you will be able to understand what is collision here. Okay. So in that previous video, I have explained chaining. I, I assume that you have already watched that video or you know what is chaining in hashing. So this is done. We know how to do this chaining stuff. It is very easy and it is very intuitive also. Now let's look at this guy open addressing. Let me just create a table here. So again, we have n is equal to four. I'm taking very small example so that I can fit all these things in this screen <laughs> and we'll take this two and six example because they have the collision. Correct. So first I'll put two modulo four. The answer is two. So this two will go into this place, right? So zero, one, two and three, sorry, this place. So we have two here. Now there won't be any uh, link list and all. Okay. So I have just filled this space with two. Now see, now let's suppose six is coming. Six modulo four is also two. Answer is two. So you'll go and push six at second location, but you find that it is actually filled. Now let's compare all these three techniques. So first technique, what this guy would do, this will just put into the next available space. What is next available space? This guy, it will directly put it here without asking any question. Now you might be thinking, dude, when I will search for six, what I'm going to do now, actually you will search for six like this only six modulo four and you will get two. Obviously now you will start with two and you will see, is this six? No, it is not six. Then, you know, I inserted data using linear probing. So meaning I have to search in the next also. Okay. Then you will see is next is not null or not empty or not zero, whatever delimiter you using to denote that it is filled or not. So this is how you will search. You know that, okay, I have used linear probing. So you have to go next, next, next till you see an empty space. So if you encounter any empty space, meaning that element doesn't exist, let's suppose this six was not there. Let me just erase this and this is what the state is. And now you are asking, dude, six is there or not? Then what you will do again, the same thing, six mode four, you will have answer two. you will start at this location and you will find that this is filled, but this is linear probing. You will try to go to next, but this is null or empty. Then you will stop there only your algorithm will stop. Your loop will stop. It won't go further. And yeah, if by chance you hit the bottom, you have this circular way to find again, because it is possible that six was there. And, uh, if you are putting 10, 10 mod four is like again two. So you will try to put here. You cannot put, you'll try to put here. You cannot put, then you will go circular and you will try to put here and you can put because it is empty. So you'll put 10 here. Okay. So you go circular. Now there is a bigger problem in this because let's suppose I want to delete six. I deleted that. Okay. So this is null now. And now I'm asking, dude, do you have 10? I'll do this. I'll go for this index. No, this is not 10. I'll go to next. It is null. Then what I will think actually 10 is not there, but 10 is there. So this requires some extra stuff to uh, to be handled, like, uh, to denote that maybe you will have some uh, spatial address or spatial value like hash. If you remove something, if you delete something, meaning you will put hash. So if you see hash, meaning you will think, oh, okay, there is something deleted from here, meaning there is a possibility that I'll get uh, 10 in next box. So you will try to go to next and you will get 10 here. Make sense? Yeah. So this is like a linear probing. You will keep looking for the next available space and you will put that data there. That's it. Just remember that much. It will be enough. And then quadratic probing is like this h plus i square 
modulo n you will search space quadratically let me show you an example here let's suppose this is your initial data and uh, the hash function is like this we have h i square mod n okay so as usual let's suppose you are trying to push 10 and we'll have collision obviously because we will try to put this at second location second location is already full now you have to use this formula in order to find the next location you will not just blindly start looking for the next one okay so this is the formula formula is what is h h we've got 2 so 2 plus i square what is i here i is the number of attempts you have already done how many attempts you did to find that location only one this is the first attempt right so one square is one and then modulo four so basically three mode four is three now you will try to put here but see this is the problem this is already filled so now we have two plus now this is second attempt so two square and then mode four surprisingly you have sorry two because this is like six and six mod four is again two so you'll have again two here now this is the problem with the quadratic probing see can you see this you looked for this place then you look for this place and then it's like in loop you will look for these two places only whereas this and this is already available you will not go for this see if you would have gone for linear probing successfully you would have gone to just next and you would have put this data meaning 10 would have successfully gone here as it went to this location in linear probing right but quadratic is having this problem that's why this is not so much famous if you don't believe me see 2 plus 3 square 3 square is like 9 9 plus 2 11 11 mode 4 answer is what 3 see 3 is already filled and if you are going for fourth attempt 2 plus fourth square is like 16 plus 2 18 mod 4 again 2 is the answer see you are stuck in a loop this is the problem with the quadratic probing that's why it is not famous next is double hashing double hashing is like very simple so let's understand these things properly now so as double so this is your first and this is your second hash function first you will apply this only if after applying this you find that there is a collision you will go for this function and you will apply h1 plus i i is nothing but what is the attempt because it is possible that after applying this also you did not found the correct result i mean correct place so let's take our uh, previous example that we wanted to push 10 right so we'll do this 10 modulo n n is 4 here so like 10 modulo 4 answer is 2 you want to put here but you cannot put so this is done you applied this but you could not do so then you will apply this formula h1 h1 is what 2 you've already found 2 plus i is 1 your first attempt h2 is what 8 minus k is what your number so 10 modulo 8 this is your output like 2 so this is going to be 2 plus let's put 8 minus this is like 10 modulo 8 is minus 2 so this is like 6 and 6 plus 2 is 8 so answer is 8 now so we have 8 and then we have mod oh sorry modulo n just forgot that so modulo n so here n is 4 so 8 modulo division 4 answer is 0 now we are able to push this here see that's why double hashing is very famous and linear probing is very famous but quadratic is like having issues and it is not that efficient okay i have explained all these things so roughly here and there just because you just should have an idea like how internal stuff works that's why i'm bringing this data to you so that if your colleagues are talking and if you are constructing some data structure then you should know like okay what is the main funda behind using hashing and all that okay and you should be very confident when you talk about some data structures right so that's why knowing internals always help thanks for watching guys bye bye take care i'll see you in the next videos Ta -da.